All right, so we are going to tackle asymptotes now, which means we have some rational functions coming along. That means all the stuff that you did in the polynomial functions, meaning max min, um, first derivative test, finding points of inflection, concavity or second derivative test, all that stuff goes with this, but this is a note in itself. Um, just a little reminder that here on the Google site, there's a link to the advanced functions Google site, so it can take you there. Um, we're in curve sketching, and there's a resource sheet for curve sketching, so um, if I open that up, it's basically a little, I'm going to call it a little cheat sheet, even though it's a resource sheet, and it basically leads you through all the things you have to do. So eventually we'll be doing intercepts, y and x. I usually do x first, then y. Then we'll deal with asymptotes, uh, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes. I'll be leaving oblique asymptotes out because that is old curriculum calculus, when calculus was a standalone course and not calculus in vectors. So all the tests are reminded to you here. Um, it is pretty much the same, and I say pretty much the same as what you learned in advanced functions. Um, if you can, oh, and a little note here, it says asymptotes, You own, it's only necessary to complete these steps if there is a fraction with letters in the denominator, which are all the examples today and all the examples in the upcoming lesson. Next thing is max min with the first derivative test. So take the derivative using the chain rule or the product rule or the quotient rule, dot, dot, dot. Go through all your steps. First derivative test explains what's going on. Next thing is points of inflection with the second derivative test. This stuff is whether you have letter fractions or not. Here's the steps. Oops. Here's the steps and the second derivative test steps and then the sketch. Um, and of course the you are done. So that is that. Um, but if you are rusty on any of this, it is your responsibility to go back and maybe watch a couple of videos from the advanced functions. So that's why it is linked on the home page so that you can get there. So there it is. Um, again, we're here. And so far, optimization over an interval, which I kind of did that twice, once in the third unit and once in this unit, which apparently is the seventh. Max min and increasing and decreasing intervals, points of inflection. We'll be going over all of that with the next lesson. Putting it all together, the polynomial curve sketching. Um, yes, something bad happened in my video, but I handled it well in hindsight, I think. Um, and then we're looking at vertical and horizontal asymptotes here, and then putting it all together again here. Um, putting it all together rational rather than polynomial, which is what happened up here. Um, there are some tiny changes between asymptotes and advanced functions and asymptotes and calculus. It's mostly notation, so it's mostly how you write stuff, not the actual math. And a big note that I just said, that oblique asymptotes and holes are not present in this particular course. They are present in other calculus courses. Um, they do ex exist outside this curriculum. If you are looking over the rational functions unit from advanced functions, you can skip over looking at the oblique asymptotes and you can skip over holes, even though it might be a nice reminder for you um, before you head off to wherever you're heading off to. So first up is this, and there's a lot of repeat. I probably stole some stuff um, from the advanced functions slides, but we're talking about asymptotes and I'm jamming together vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes in this note. So a vertical asymptote is vertical, so up and down. It is an imaginary line on the graph of a function that the function will never cross. You might remember, and we'll get to it eventually, you might remember that a horizontal asymptote can be crossed. Vertical asymptotes, never. These lines occur when the denominator of a function is equal to zero, so it creates bad math, which is why it's a never giving an undefined value for that function at that x value. So vertical asymptotes, first bit of writing here, are always x equals a number. 
Um, example one, oh, and do not worry about asymptotes when there are no let there is are no letter fractions to graph. So here's what I cut and pasted off that little cheat sheet. Um, can be none, can be one, can be more of them. I'm going to tell you that I'm going to do vertical asymptotes and then I'll go ahead and do it. So I'm not packing this together with all the other things. We're just doing a little standalone note. So the step is same as advanced functions, let the denominator equal zero. So that's taking x squared plus 4x and equaling it to zero and doing whatever it takes to solve for x and come out with x equals a number. So in this case, it's common factoring, which I've done a lot of in this particular unit because it's just so badly done, um, generally speaking, not necessarily by you. So then I can take x is equal to zero, and I can take x plus four is equal to zero, and I can come out with two vertical asymptotes. I come out with vertical asymptote, x equals zero, and another one that is x equals negative four. It is not VA equals zero. It is not VA equals negative four. It is X equals a number. So X equals zero and X equals negative four. So the only part that's absolutely terrible about this is that we have to do two tests, one limit from the left and one limit from the right. And although I've got right first and left second, I always do the left before the right. So this is the new way of writing stuff. Um, and this question is only asking for vertical asymptotes, so I'm not eventually going to do horizontal. So here's the test. First thing I'm going to tell you is please do the test. And next thing you have to tell me which one you're doing first. And then we're going to do left and we're going to do right. So nothing has changed yet until right this very second right now. And you get to say limit as x approaches zero from the left, so that's old school limit language, of the original function, which is x plus 1 over x squared plus 4x. And I'm going to do the same thing for the right side, only I'm going to indicate right side with that little positive sign. Only I'm going to write this one a little bit different. I'm going to write the factored form of the denominator. Either one is good. So this is where in advanced functions I told you pick a number really really close to zero but on the left hand side. So you picked a number really really close to zero which was like negative 0.1 and you inserted it into this. And that's what you have to do here. Still only your notation, the way you write things, is different. So here I'm going to use x is equal to negative 0 0.01 and here I'm going to use x is equal to positive 0 0.01. I don't care what you use as long as it's nice and close to zero and your result is okay. And we get to do the short form version of this. So negative 0 0.0 negative 0 0.1 in this x is going to be a positive numerator. Then you might need your calculator in, out for this, but if you take negative 0 0.01 and you multiply it or you square it, and this is for people who aren't going to a school that lets you use a calculator, so 0 0.1 make it negative and square it, plus 4 times 0 0.01 negative is equal to a negative value. And if you take a look at this, if your limit is negative, it is down. And I'll remind you about this stuff as well. Then we do it over here, and this is for the people who can't use a calculator. So this makes it a little bit easier. Pick your value. 0 .0 0.1 plus 1 is a positive. 0 0.1 in this x is a positive, and 0 0.1 in this bracket is also a positive. So we end up with three positives being either multiplied or divided, which is a positive, and then it's up. Now I'm going to do the exact same thing for x equals negative 4. 
left side and right side, but there is no way I'm going to use my calculator when I don't have to. It's a lot to write down for me or to push buttons. I find that really tough, especially without the smart board. So I'm going to use x plus 1 over x times x plus 4 in both cases. So I'm going to use the factored version. And I have to decide the numbers I'm going to use. And really, you don't have to tell me. You just have to be right. So, oh, did you notice what I missed? Left, right. Left, I'm going to use negative 5.1. And write negative 4. Oh, that's so bad. Oh, I gotta stop doing this at night. Negative 4.1 and negative 3.9. So slightly to the left and slightly to the right of negative 4. So it does matter what numbers you pick. So here, negative 4.1 plus 1 is negative. Negative 4.1, do nothing with it, is negative. Negative 4.1 plus 4 is slightly negative. So we end up with two negatives canceling out and the third one remaining. So that's a down. And this one, negative 3.9 plus 1 is a negative. Negative 3.9 on its own is a negative, and negative 3.9 plus 4 is slightly positive. So we end up with these two negatives canceling out, which means we've got no negatives, so that's an up. And please remember what I told you in advanced functions, and in case you've forgotten or didn't take it with me, remember it does not always alternate. You may want it to have a pattern, but rational functions act irrationally. Their asymptote tests act irrationally. So as a reminder, oh, hang on a second. This one's a sketch. This one just says determine. So I'm not going to actually sketch this one. I'll remind you how to sketch with the next one. So this is how to do the math. The next one, how to do the math and sketch. So let's do it all again for this. Here's my steps again. Vertical asymptote, let the denominator equal zero, and solve. That's not too difficult. I'm also extremely pleased that when I go to do this test, I only have to test one, as in a left side and a right side. So left side, right side, limit as x approaches four, limit as x approaches four, left, right, x plus three over x minus four, x plus three over x minus four. I'm gonna pick 3.9 to test for my x on this side and 4.1 here. I don't think I screwed that up. And again, I'm going to do my tiny test. So 3.9 plus 3 is positive. 3.9 minus 4 is slightly negative. A negative and a positive when you're dividing is a negative, so that's a down. 4.1 plus 3 is positive. 4.1 minus 4 is slightly positive, so I end up with a positive result, which is an up. So you can see why I want to sketch this one, because I don't have to do two of them. And again, when I give you questions like this on some sort of assessment, you don't get a billion of them. So let's remind you how to graph. First thing is make sure you're drawing an X and Y axis with a ruler and put labels on them because I'm about to put a vertical line on this picture through X equals four and I need to be able to find it. So you do a couple of things to find it. You label these lines this one you put down is dashed because it's just a guideline. It's not really there. It's invisible. And you label it. You label everything. And then you go to your results. So because I am so smart, 
I do the left on the left and the right on the right. So on the left side of x equals 4, I'm supposed to put a little arrow down. And on the right side of x equals 4, I'm supposed to put a little arrow up. And that's what we did in advanced functions. So I'm going to take a little hand cramp break, and I will come back with all the horizontal asymptote stuff. So I'll leave it there for a sec and pause. Okay, sometimes I just need a teensy break. This one, horizontal asymptotes. They are imaginary, so again dashed, horizontal lines that the curve must use as an asymptote. So it uses it out to the outside edges of the graph, and because it's a horizontal asymptote, it is a y equals number. It's horizontal, which is this way. So way down here on the big x's and way down here on the big negative x's, that's where it has to use the asymptote. However, it may cross the asymptote in some place, usually near the center, so it doesn't have to be 0, 0. So this is the same. You let, except for this last, this first part, so I colored this all in purple, only this is a slightly different shade of purple. So you let x approach infinity, and then the steps are the same. You eliminate any insignificant values by dividing by the highest degree of x. You test large positive negative values in the function minus ha to see how the curve behaves near the asymptote. So we're going to determine the horizontal asymptote for this, and I will show you how to take care of it. With horizontal asymptotes, there is only ever one of them. Let's see if I have that thing still up. I do. Horizontal asymptotes are on here somewhere. Can be none or one. So you can't have multiple horizontal asymptotes. Find the limit as x approaches infinity. Divide by the highest degree and eliminate negligible quantities. Easy for me to say. Y equals a number. Here's your two tests. Positive means above. Negative means below. In both these cases, for the record, in both these cases, if you ended up with exactly zero, that means you've done something very wrong. In this case, maybe you picked really crappy numbers like I did. Um, only, only I caught myself quick enough. And same thing here. Only usually the problem in this space is that you forget to minus off the horizontal asymptote. This is a comparison test. So let's get back to this note and do the work here. So this time I'm going to color this in red. And the first thing you do is not as x approaches positive negative infinity, like I made you do in advanced functions. This time you do the limit as x approaches positive negative infinity, and then you write this down. Then you look and you find the highest power of x. Well, the highest power of x here is x to the 1. So the work we have to do is 3x and x and positive 2, all of them divided by x to the 1. Then clean it up, and some of you can see this without showing all the work. For instance, I can tell that if I divide 3x by x, I just get a 3. And I can tell that if I divide x by x, I get a 1. And I can tell that if I divide 2 by x, it doesn't do anything at all. And you might remember from, from advanced functions that because you wrote this mumbo jumbo slightly different, anything that still has an x on the bottom heads to 0. So what we end up this time with is 3 over 1 plus 0, which is 3 over 1, and that makes our horizontal asymptote not equal to 3. It's y equals 3, because way back at the top, I reminded you that it's y equals a number. Even on the resource sheet, which you may use now but can't use later, it's y equals a number. So, that means that I can draw my imaginary line. What I did was very bad. 
don't forget that we've got multiple lines on this picture, so you need to label, label, and label. Now I'm going to do the test. So the test is test large positive negative values. So remember that you can use 10 and negative 10 as your x values in the function minus, minus ha. So the function is 3x over x plus 2. So to do the test, I'm going to put in negative 10 minus my ha on the left, because negative 10 is on the left as an x value, and this on the right, just for safety. So don't want to scroll up and down, so there's my function again. So 3 times negative 10, no shortcuts for this one, unfortunately. Negative 10 plus 2 minus the ha. And just because it's visible, I'll plug this one in. And so that's negative 30 divided by negative 8 minus 3. So negative 30 divided by negative 8 is the same thing as 30 divided by 8. And that's 3 point something or other. So it's minus 3 is a positive value. This is 30 divided by 12, and that's 2 point something or other. Minus 3 is a negative. And just to reference the resource sheet again, if it's positive, you say above. If it's negative, you say below. Don't have it here. If it's positive, you say above. And if it's negative, you say below. So on my picture, above, below. Above, because it's on the left, below. That's what I mean by safety. And that's all I want you to be able to do right now. We will pack it together soon enough. Here is, oh, I don't have to go through these because we did it in advanced functions. So those are some other questions that we can do. Um, and this one says, can we do the vertical and horizontal asymptote? So let's put this all together. So there is my missing horizontal asymptote information. Um, I will have to check and put on the Google site what the work is, because I can tell I'm out of slides, which means I don't even know. So let's take a look at this. Blue for vertical asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are when you let the denominator equal 0. And that is just x plus 1, sorry, x minus 1 times x minus 1. So I get the same answer twice which is x equals 1. There's my one and only vertical asymptote, because I'm not going to have two of them with the same name. Then I'm going to do my test for that. This is back to the original slide number one. Happy that I only have one of them. So I've got a left side test and a right side test. So limit as x approaches 1, limit as x approaches 1 from the negative side from the positive side of 2x squared plus 4x minus 3 over x minus 1 squared and then 2x squared plus 4x minus 3 over x minus 1 squared. So you have to have something behind the limit. Now, if I had been smart, I would have tried to factor this, but I actually don't think it's factorable now that I'm looking at it. I do, just for safety's sake, want to write down the x's I'm going to use. So on the left, 0 0.9 or 0 0.99 or 0 0.999, and on the right, 1.1. Now, the only part that's terrible is that because this isn't factorable, I have to do a half and half simple test. So I have to dig out the calculator for putting the 0.9 into the top. So 
0.9 squared times 2 equals that, don't care about that, plus 4 times 0.9 minus 3 is equal to a positive. And then 0.9 minus 1 is negative, but I'm squaring it, so it's positive, so that's positive, which is up. Then I get to do the whole thing again. Do not be surprised if it alternates. Do not be surprised if it doesn't alternate. So 1.1 .1 squared times 2 is equal to this part, plus 4 times 1.1 .1 minus 3 equals a positive. And 1.1 .1 minus 1 is a positive squared is still a positive. Oh my gosh! Surprise! When I told you not to, we have another up. So that means that before I go on to the horizontal asymptote, I am going to draw this much of a picture. Remember your vertical asymptotes are vertical. And my little red arrows up, up. That's not too difficult. Hard to screw that up. Up. Okay, so next thing is my horizontal asymptotes. So horizontal asymptote, we limit as x approaches positive negative infinity of this. Now, I don't like that part of it doesn't have a bracket and part of it does have a bracket. So I'm going to keep it all bracketless because, as I said, the top, I don't think it's factorable, but the bottom, I can multiply it out. So if this is too quick for you, you foil off to the side because the answer is not x squared plus 1. It is x, squared, x minus 1 times x minus 1, foil it out, and you end up with that. And I'm going to do this mentally because I don't want to write it down, and I also expect you to be able to move on from a little bit of advanced functions. Still got to write that down. So I'm going to divide everything by x squared because that's the highest power. So if I divide this by x squared, I'm left with 2. If I divide this by x squared, an x cancels out from one level or each level and I get that. And if I divide this by x squared, it looks like I'm dividing it by x squared. Over, this divided by x squared is 1. This divided by x squared means an x cancels out. And 1 divided by x squared is 1 divided by x squared. And because you wrote this down, 0, 0, 0, 0, so my answer is 2 over 1. So my horizontal asymptote isn't 2, it's y equals 2. So I'm going to go back up to my picture, find me the dotted line, fake a y equals 2, label it, and I'll put all my red arrows in a second. Let's get this out of there. All right, time to test. Don't know how much room I need, should give myself plenty. So, there's my original in its most expanded form, not that it matters which form you do it in. So if you feel like using two times negative 10 squared plus 4 times negative 10 minus 3 all over negative 10 squared minus 2 times negative 10 plus 1 minus the horizontal asymptote, then that's fine. So I'm going to do this sort of mentally. So negative 10 squared is 100 times 2 is 200 minus 40 minus 3 over 100 
plus 20 plus 1 minus 2. So that's 200 minus 40, which is 160, minus 3 is 157, over 121 minus 2. And this only divides into that one time in a bit. So 1 in a bit minus 2 is a negative value, which is below. And then over here, I'm going to put tens in. And it shouldn't matter one bit whether you put tens into this or tens into this version. It shouldn't matter one bit. Oh, it should matter if you forget to minus off the horizontal asymptote. So 200 plus 40 minus 3 over 9 squared minus 2. That's 240 minus 3 is 237 divided by 81. And I know that's more than 2 because 2 times 81 is 162. So that's more than 2 minus 2 will remain positive so that's an above. So while I've got my red pen out below on the left because negative 10 is on the left above on the right because 10 is on the right. And remember the negative 10 and 10 are x values. So with the help of other stuff, hopefully you might do your connection and then figure out that, oh crap, that does cross. But you need a whole bunch of calculus before you actually pull that off. Or you need a whole bunch of advanced functions. Now I will tell you, calculus makes a much more accurate sketch. So um, that is it for your reminder and new notation for asymptotes, horizontal and vertical, but not oblique. And I will come back with the final lesson, and that is everything part two. So I'll do two examples, those two examples there. Um, I will definitely need a, need a handbrake between them, and I've obviously got the um, work listed there, and I'll put everything on the Google site. This one I'll have to check out for you. So go to the Google site if you are with me on that. There we go.